What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Analyzing Literature, featuring your host, me, Mr. Miniman. This time we're going to talk about how to analyze character. Now, this is probably something you're familiar with, but it couldn't hurt to brush up a little bit. There are different ways that an author will characterize the people in their books. This technique is, of course, called characterization. And there are two primary types of characterization. There is direct characterization and indirect characterization. Direct characterization is when an author tells you point blank what you're supposed to think about a character. It's provided directly. For example, if the narrator tells you John was an idiot, well, then you know you're probably supposed to assume John is an idiot. Indirect characterization is different. It's more subtle. The reader has to draw conclusions for themselves about characters. Well, what do we draw these conclusions based on? Some of it will be based on the actions those characters perform. Other times it will be from dialogue, the things those characters say. And at other times you're going to have to look at the tone that the narrator uses when describing those characters. Is it a positive tone? Is it a negative tone? Is it admiring? Is it condemning? Uh, what kind of tone is the author establishing about those characters? And as you read better and better books, the characters will become more and more complex. So it's not going to be just as simple as, well, this is a good character and that's a bad character. Even the bad characters will have recognizable sympathetic motivations, and even the good characters will have flaws that you don't particularly like. So, for example, there's this scene from To Kill a Mockingbird. This is in the middle of Scout's first school day. The teacher tried to give Walter Cunningham some money for lunch, and he refused it, and she didn't understand, and Scout tried to explain, and the teacher got frustrated with Scout. And at the beginning of the next chapter, we get this interaction. Catching Walter Cunningham in the schoolyard gave me some pleasure, but when I was rubbing his nose in the dirt, Jem came by and told me to stop. You're bigger than he is, he said. He's as old as you nearly, I said. He made me start off on the wrong foot. Let him go, Scout. Why? He didn't have any lunch, I said, and explained my involvement in Walter's dietary affairs. Walter had picked himself up and was standing quietly listening to Jem and me. His fists were half-cocked, as if expecting an onslaught from both of us. I stomped at him to chase him away, but Jem put out his hand and stopped me. He examined Walter with an air of speculation. "'Your daddy Mr. Walter Cunningham from Old Sarum?' he asked, and Walter nodded. Walter looked as though he had been raised on fish food. His eyes, as blue as Dill Harris's, were red-rimmed and watery. There was no color in his face except the tip of his nose, which was moistly pink." He fingered the straps of his overalls, nervously picking at the metal hooks. Jem suddenly grinned at him. "'Come on home to dinner with us, Walter,' he said. "'We'd be glad to have you.' Walter's face brightened, then darkened. Jem said, "'Our daddy's a friend of your daddy's. Scout here, she's crazy. She won't fight you any more.' "'I wouldn't be too certain of that,' I said. Jem's free dispensation of my pledge irked me, but precious noontime minutes were ticking away. Yeah, Walter, I won't jump on you again. Don't you like butter beans? Our cow's a real good cook. Walter stood where he was, biting his lip. Jem and I gave up, and we were nearly to the Radley place when Walter called, Hey, I'm coming. Okay, we're going to take a look at Scout here. We get some conflicting ideas about Scout. First, um, Scout is a little savage. She's beating up on this poor Walter Cunningham. She's a little spitfire. Um, she's not your typical girly girl. We can tell that right away. Um, she's willing to get dirty. She's willing to fight. She's also not as perceptive as her brother Jem. Now, that's to be expected. Jem's four years older than she is. But when she takes a closer look, she realizes that Walter is starving. She says he looks as if he's been raised on fish food. So she's kind of thoughtless. She doesn't consider other people very much. Uh, she just gets angry with Walter and takes it out on him. But she eventually sees reason 
and with Jem invites him to their house for lunch. We have to assume that she saw what Jem saw after Jem pointed it out, that Walter must be starving, and so she's sympathetic to that. So based on that passage, we can characterize Scout a few different ways. One, she's feisty. Two, she's self-centered, which, you know, she's like six in that scene, so all six-year-olds are self-centered. And she's capable of sympathy, but it takes somebody else to point it out to her. Again, she's only six, so it's to be expected. But it's enough to give us a starting point for what kind of person Scout is. So here's my reader's notebook entry for this passage. I labeled it the protagonist because Scout is who I'm analyzing, and she's the protagonist, but you could use these same analyzing techniques of indirect and direct characterization with the antagonist, with the secondary character. works for all kinds of characters. This just happens to be for the protagonist. So my little checklist, label and date, got it. Don't summarize, we'll see in a second. Quote and cite, I do have a quote and a citation. And it's actually six sentences, so I went a little over, but that's okay. So, here's what I said. Scout Fitch is not a typical child protagonist. She's hardly sweet and innocent. For instance, she beats up poor Walter Cunningham for getting her in trouble with the teacher, even though Walter didn't have anything to do with it. She says she felt better as she was, quote, rubbing his nose in the dirt, page 25. Clearly, Scout is a feisty tomboy, but she's also thoughtless about it. She doesn't take the time to really look at Walter's situation. Only when Jem draws her attention to it does she finally feel some sympathy for Walter and invite him over for lunch. Scout has a lot to learn about empathy. So it's definitely not summary because I'm making judgments about her. I'm saying she's thoughtless. I'm saying she's hardly sweet and innocent. I'm saying she's not typical. So I'm not just saying what the text told me. I'm actually making judgments for myself. So we can put our check mark there. Um, other than that, I mean, I started off with a, a sentence that kind of captures uh, the main idea. I made sure to provide a citation. Um, and I came to conclusions. I made judgments. And that's what you should do in a reader's notebook entry. Provide your own interpretation, your own thought. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Mendeman out.